This is KTRN DB, broadcasting worldwide from Southeast Oklahoma, USA to parts unknown. The new Be Prepared for Christmas package from Sun Ovens contains everything you need to harness the power of the sun for cooking, water, and dehydrating. The perfect gift for the preppers or outdoor enthusiasts on your shopping list. A Sun Oven uses the sun's power to bake, boil, or steam food, heat water for purification or personal hygiene, or solar dehydrate. When you use the sun's power on sunny days, you preserve your fuel storage for rainy days. Sun-baked foods retain moisture, have less shrinkage, and do not burn. Sun-baked roasts are tastier and more succulent, and sun-baked bread has unparalleled taste and texture. The new Be Prepared for Christmas package lets you roast an 18-pound turkey. For the past 26 years, Sun Ovens has been proudly made in the U.S., are durable, and have a long life and come with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Don't be fooled by cheap imitations. For a discount coupon, visit sunoven.com forward slash podcast. That's sunoven.com forward slash podcast. Have you ever wanted to generate your own supply of electrical power, even save money on your electric bill? If so, this is going to be the most important message you will ever hear. Solar power generators are now available. These emergency backup systems provide life-saving electrical power when you need it most. Unlike gas generators, a solar generator runs quietly, emits no fumes, and produces electricity from the sun. It's like having an electric power plant running quietly in your own home. Run some pumps, shortwave radios, computers, and even keep your food from spoiling. Whether it's hurricane ice storms, brownouts, or blackouts, you'll never suffer through painful power outages again. And here's the best news. A remarkable fall truckload sale going on right now that gets you $1,700 in bonuses when you buy a solar generator. To find out why solar generators are the best generators and get $1,700 for doing so, go to falltruckloadsale.com. That's falltruckloadsale.com. Generate your own supply of electricity. Go to falltruckloadsale.com. That's falltruckloadsale.com. Feeling like there are too many pressures and demands on you? Losing sleep, worrying about tests and schoolwork, even on the run because your schedule is just too busy? You may be under too much stress, and it may be affecting your mind. Get your mental edge back with New Tropic Mind Power from MindRegard.com. New Tropic Mind Power is not a drug, but a natural supplement. Its 12 powerful ingredients are natural and non-GMO, plus it's gluten-free, wheat-free, and formulated by Americans for Americans by an NSF-certified laboratory. Nootropic Mind Power is available at mindregard.com, spelled M-I-N-D-R-E-G-A-R-D.com, and comes with a 100% money-back guarantee. Free your mind with Nootropic Mind Power, cognitive supplement from mindregard.com. Mind regard. Clearly see tomorrow and yesterday. Today. And with winter comes dangerous driving conditions. Get your vehicle ready for bad weather by getting it serviced as soon as possible. Prepare for emergencies by packing food, water, warm clothes, and weather appropriate shoes or boots. Don't forget to check the spare to make sure it's usable. Stay informed on bad weather, dangerous driving events by visiting prepperpodcast.com. When Christmas comes, you don't want your family to stare at an empty chair. The truth is out there. Knowledge is power. This is the Prepper Podcast Radio Network. H.E. Safety's Common Sense Preparedness, an American Readiness Program. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the show and let you know what you're in for. Common Sense Preparedness was designed to give the American public the much-needed information on how to manage and respond to any type of disaster we might face, natural, man-made, or personal. We will not tell you who to vote for or talk about conspiracy theories or when the world is going to end, but we'll get you ready in case that does happen. During this show, you will be exposed to current emergency information from government and non-government sources. And we will talk about the true, important information that everyone needs to know. First aid, CPR, what is a tornado, what to do during an earthquake, how to prepare a family emergency plan, a family emergency communication plan, how to hunt, fish, how to build a fire, 
What to do in case of power outages. The show will be hosted by myself, Tim Howard, and a variety of guests who will come and share their expertise with us. Nowadays, everywhere you look, someone is an expert. Just because someone writes a book or runs a blog does not make them an expert. However, my credentials? Well, they're pretty extensive with over 25 years field experience as a chemical biological warfare instructor, firefighter, correctional safety manager, area safety manager, safety inspector. I have been associated with various federal, state, and local governments. Currently, I'm associated with the FEMA Think Tank, OSHA Field Councils, and HE Safety Consultants. I have received numerous awards and citations throughout my career with the United States Air Force, U.S. Department of Justice, founding member of the United States Department of Homeland Security, and the U.S. Department of Labor. What does this mean? Well, it means you'll get reliable, verifiable information, not paranoia theories. I will share the experiences I have seen in the field since 1986, and I will be able to explain some of the why things are happening. Before we go any further, any information that you hear on this show, or find on csp.hesafety.org, is to be taken as informational only. We are not legal or medical advisors. We are here to give you alternate information to get you to think about things and use your own common sense to make your decisions. We do suggest that you talk to your personal medical and legal advisors to, to help you make a well-rounded, informative decision. Our website, csp.hesafety.org, has been designed to give you more information than can be found on this program. The website is free, so stop on by and begin your research with Common Sense Preparedness. You can download or review any of the past shows from our website and comment on any of the news articles that you may see. Also, please show some love to our sponsors. It is because of them we are able to reach you and offer you this life-saving information. Our sponsors have been selected based on the quality of service they offer to our listening audience. They are the vendors that should be of most interest to you. Common Sense Preparedness' mission is not to sell you anything, but instead it is to save as many lives as we can. It is sad to hear about any life being lost when it was avoidable. Remember, a wise man prepares for the darkness while full plays. Don't get caught playing. Listen to Common Sense Preparedness at csp.hesafety.org. Welcome to Common Sense Prepare. Let's see if I'm going to box now we've been talking about wintertime safety, what to expect during the wintertime, and we've, we've skirted around with the idea of winter storms. Well, let's get into winter storm safety. Extreme cold temperatures can often accompany a winter storm, so you have to cope with power outages and icy roads. Although staying indoors as much as possible will help reduce the risk of car accidents and falls on ice, you may be also faced with indoor hazards. Many homes will be too cold, either due to power failures or because the heating system in the home is inadequate for the weather. When people must use space heaters and fireplaces to stay warm, the risk of household fires and carbon monoxide poisoning increases. A major winter storm can last for several days and be accompanied by high winds, freezing rain, or sleet, heavy snowfall, and cold temperatures. People can become trapped in their homes without utilities and other services. Heavy snowfall and blizzards can trap motorists in their cars, and attempting to walk for help in a blizzard can be a deadly decision. Winter storms can make driving and walking extremely hazardous. The aftermath of a storm can have an impact on a community or region for days, weeks, or even months. Storm effects such as extreme cold temperatures and snow accumulations, and sometimes coastal flooding, can cause hazardous conditions and hidden problems for people in the affected area. So what is a winter storm and what causes them? A winter storm can range from a moderate snow over a few hours to blizzard conditions with blinding wind-driven snow that lasts for several days. Some winter storms may be large enough to affect several states, while others may affect only a single community. Many winter storms are accompanied by low temperatures and heavy or blowing snow, which can severely reduce visibility. Winter storms can be defined differently in various parts of the country, as we spoke about before. 
Winter storms are considered deceptive killers because most deaths are indirectly related to the storm. The leading cause of death during winter storms is from automobiles and other transportation accidents. However, exhaustion and heart attacks caused by overexertion are the two most likely causes of winter storm related deaths. Elderly people account for the largest percentage of hypothermia victims. Many older Americans literally freeze to death in their own homes after being exposed to dangerously cold indoor temperatures. Or they suffocate because of improper use of fuel such as charcoal briquettes, which produces carbon monoxide. House fires occur more frequently in the winter due to lack of proper safety precautions when using alternate heating sources. Unintended fires, disposal of ashes too soon, too close to the home, improperly placed space heaters, etc. You know, you get the idea. Fires during winter storms present a great danger because water supplies may freeze and it may be difficult for firefighters to get the fire out. During a winter storm, listen to your radio, television, or NOAA weather radio for weather reports and emergency information. When shelters become opened and available, go to the designated public shelter area if your home loses power or heat during a period of extreme cold. To find a shelter, everyone's got their cell phones out. Text SHELTER, S-H-E-L-T-E-R, plus your zip code to 43362, which is for FEMA, to find the nearest shelter in your area. Once again, to find a public shelter in your area, once they are open, text SHELTER, S-H-E-L-T-E-R, plus your zip code, 243362, which is for FEMA. When using alternate forms of heating in your home, maintain ventilation, especially when using kerosene heaters to avoid buildup of toxic fumes. Refuel kerosene heaters outside and keep them at least three feet from flammable objects. Be aware of changing weather conditions. Se severe weather can change quickly. Temperatures may drop rapidly. Winds may increase or snow may fall in heavier rates. What is happening where you are may not also agree with local forecasts. Be prepared for anything. Almost the entire United States, except Hawaii and the territories, are at some risk of winter storms. The level of risk depends on the severity of local we winter weather. Some cooking safety. Never use a charcoal or gas grill indoors. The fumes are deadly. Never use an electric generator indoors or inside a garage or near the air intakes of your home because of the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. Plug in appliances to the generator using industrial heavy-duty outdoor rated cords. Do not use generators or appliances if they are wet because of the risk of electrocution. And do not store gasoline indoors where fumes can ignite. Now during a winter storm, we want to conserve fuel. Winter storms can last for several days. Great demand will be placed on electric, gas, and other fuel distribution systems, fuel oil, propane, etc. Suppliers of propane and fuel oil may not be able to replenish depleted supplies during severe weather. Electric and gas services may be temporarily disrupted when many people demand large amounts at the same time. In order to conserve fuel in your home, lower the thermostat to 65 degrees during the day and 55 at night. Also, close off un unused rooms and stuff towels or rags and cracks under doors. Cover your windows at night with blankets. Now, how to light your home safely. If there's a power failure, use battery-powered flashlights or lanterns rather than candles, and never leave lit candles unattended. Now, to conserve some heat in your home, check your doors. You may need fresh air coming in for your heater or for emergency cooking arrangements. However, if you don't need extra ventilation, keep as much as heat as possible inside your home. Avoid unnecessarily opening doors and windows. Again, close off unneeded rooms, stuff towels or rags and cracks under doors, and close draperies or cover windows with blankets at night. Now, during a winter storm, one of the most important things you want to do is monitor your body temperature, especially those of infants and the older adults. Infants less than one should never sleep in a cold room by themselves. Why? Well, infants lose body heat more rapidly than adults do. Unlike adults, infants can't make enough body heat by shivering, either. Provide warm clothing for infants and try to maintain a warm indoor temperature for them. If the temperature cannot be maintained, look at making temporary arrangements to stay elsewhere. However, in an emergency, you can keep your infant warm by using your own body heat. If you must sleep, take precautions to prevent rolling on the baby. Pillows and other soft bedding can also present a risk for, of smothering, so remove them from the area near the baby. 
Older adults often make less body heat because of slower metabolism and less physical activity. If you're over 65, check the temperature in your home often during severe cold weather. Also, check on elderly friends and neighbors frequently to ensure that their homes are adequately heated. Also, during a winter storm or when you know a winter storm is coming, uh, maintain a water supply. Extreme cold can cause water pipes in your homes to freeze and sometimes rupture. When very cold temperatures are expected, fill up your bathtubs and sinks with water. Just in case, you need an emergency supply of water. Leave all water taps slightly open so they drip continuously. However, make sure they don't overflow the sink. Keep the indoor temperature warm as possible. Improve the circulation of heated air near pipes. For example, open kitchen cabinet doors beneath the kitchen sink in order for the hot air to get into, into those pipes. If your pipes do freeze, do not thaw them with a torch. Instead, thaw them slowly by directing warm air from an electric hair dryer onto the pipes. Remove any insulation or layers of newspaper and wrap pipes in rags. Completely open all faucets and pour hot water over the pipes, starting where they are most exposed to the cold, or where the cold is most likely to penetrate. If you cannot thaw your pipes, or the pipes have ruptured, use bottled water or get water from a neighbor's home. As an emergency measure, if there's no water available, snow can be melted for water. Bringing water to a rolling boil for one minute will kill most microorganisms and parasites. However, it does not remove chemical pollutants sometimes found in snow. Also, during a winter storm, you want to eat and drink wisely. Eating well-balanced meals will help you stay warmer. Do not drink alcohol or caffeinated beverages. They, they cause the body to lose heat more rapidly. Instead, drink warm, sweet beverages or broth to help maintain your body's temperature. Eat regularly. Food provides the body with energy for producing its own heat. Also, keep your body replenished with fluids to prevent dehydration. Drink liquids such as warm broth or juices. Avoid caffeine and alcohol, like we just said. Uh, caffeine is a stimulant accelerates the symptoms of hypothermia. Alcohol, such as brandy, is a depressant and hastens the effect of the cold on the body. Alcohol also slows circulation and makes you less aware of the effects of the cold. Both caffeine and alcohol can cause dehydration. Now, winter storm safety for children when they're out there playing. The best way to stay safe in a snowstorm is to stay inside. Long periods of exposure to severe cold increases the risk of frostbite or hypothermia. Also, it is easy to become disoriented in the blowing snow. If you go outside to play after a snowstorm, dress in many layers and wear a hat and mittens. Many layers of thin clothing are warmer than a single thick layer of clothing. One of the best ways to stay warm is to wear a hat. Most body heat is lost through the top of the head. Keep hands and feet warm also. Mittens are warmer than gloves. Covering a mouth with a scarf protects lungs from extreme cold air also. Also, let your children know we come inside often for warm-up breaks. Just like in the summer when we have cool-down breaks, in the winter we have to have warm-up breaks. Long periods of exposure to severe cold increases the, the risk of frostbite and hypothermia. Also let them know if they start to shiver, if they start to shiver a lot and get very tired, or if their nose, fingers, toes, or earlobes start to feel numb, or turn very pale, come inside right away and tell an adult. These are signs of hypothermia and frostbite. If you or your children experience these types of symptoms, you will need immediate attention to prevent further risk. Now, one of the ways to entice a child to come inside when they're playing out in the snow is to have the hot cocoa ready. I remember many, many winters in New Jersey. The best thing about them wasn't the snowball fights or the snowmen or the sledding. It was the hot cocoa. I, I, I was always looking forward to that. I, I don't think I know a child who doesn't like hot cocoa. It brings back memories nowadays as a, as a grown adult. So have the hot cocoa ready, warm them up while they're inside, uh, clean up, uh, dry out their clothing as much as possible, or put fresh clothing on them when they go back outside. Remember, the key here is to keep the body warm, and warm up breaks are required. You are listening to Common Sense Preparedness, an American readiness program. We are broadcasting and can be heard on PrepperPodcast.com, KPRN TV, Block Talk Radio, Stitcher Radio, BBS Radio, and at our website at CSPDB.com. Common Sense Preparedness brought to you in part by PatriotMusic.com. America has known the world over for its passion for freedom and individual rights. 
If you love your country as much as I do, and if you like to hear great music inspiring this passion, check out PatriotMusic.com. Download music from three great albums, including a new album just released with a cover you won't forget. PatriotMusic.com. Hi, this is Matt Fitzgibbons with PatriotMusic.com. You're listening to Common Sense Preparedness with Tim Howard. This portion of Common Sense Preparedness is being sponsored by Health Operation Team. Preparing one person, one community, one country at a time. Providing awareness, education, training, resources, and medical support. Health care and emergency preparedness planning, both domestic and international. Please go to the website at www.hotean.org, hotteam.org, and see where they have been, where they are, and where they're going. Or give them a call at 678-431-8914. Once again, that is 678-431-8914. And let them know you heard it on Common Sense Preparedness. Also, follow them on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. That's HotTeam.org, your source for helping individuals, families, businesses, and communities be safer and healthier. This portion of Common Sense Preparedness is being sponsored by Rocky Mountain Survival Gear, your complete source for all things camping and prepping. They recognize the need of many people in the United States struggling to put together survival packs, not knowing where to start or what they need. So Rocky Mountain Survival Gear will be offering customized bug out bags, emergency kits, and 72 hour bags to fit your specific needs. All you need to do is click on the items you need and they'll put it together for you. Remember, once a disaster strikes, it's too late to prepare. So prepare now for the future with Rocky Mountain Survival Gear. Contact them at www.rockymountainsurvivalgear.com or give them a call at 720- 244-9701. Once again, that's 720-244-9701. Common Sense Preparedness would like to announce our new sponsorship from FoodInsurance.com. We have looked all around at emergency food suppliers, and FoodInsurance.com has become one of the most dependable and trustworthy food vendors out there. FoodInsurance.com is even offering all Common Sense Preparedness listeners special access to exclusive deals by clicking on the foodinsurance.com banner that appears on our website or by visiting foodinsurance.com slash common sense. Common Sense Preparedness finds it an honor to recommend foodinsurance.com to our listeners. Common Sense Preparedness, an American readiness program. And our holiday safety crime prevention tips. Christmas is one of the highest crime times of the year. The following precautions can help you ensure the safety of you and your family. Before you go shopping, avoid carrying a purse. Use a fanny pack or deep pockets and clothing in to carry what you need. Carry small amounts of cash. Carry your keys, cash, credit cards separate from each other. Wallet in the front pocket. Ensure your cell phone is fully charged before going to the store. Shop during daylight hours when possible. Avoid shopping alone. There is safety in numbers. While shopping, if you have to carry a purse, carry it close to your body and always zipped. Put the purse flap against your body and holding it with your arm. Wearing a purse under your coat. Park strategically close to the store is optimal. Park in well-lit areas, never park next to a van, know exactly where you park, make a mental note of it, make sure you lock your car. Now while shopping, constantly pay attention to what's going on around you. When hurried or in a crowded shop, make sure you get all forms of ID and credit cards returned to you before you leave. Be aware of strangers accidentally bumping into you. Avoid carrying large large packages that block your vision. Consolidate as many packages as possible. Consider having your purchases delivered to your home. Ask if the store will provide a security escort to your vehicle. Now after shopping, leave the mall store well before closing time. Avoid shopping until you are exhausted. You are more alert when you are less tired. 
Have your keys in your hand before you go to the car. Hold one of the keys in between your fingers in case you are, are attacked and you have to fight off your attacker. Do not use your automobile door locks to locate your car. No one do attention. Check underneath it as you approach it. Check the back seat of your vehicle before you get into it. When going to the store, from store to store, keep your packages out of sight and in your trunk. Some home security. Keep gifts hidden from view through outside windows. After opening gifts, break down cardboard boxes of expensive electronics and fancy stores and put them in plastic bags to hide the fact that you have valuable items in your home. Happy Holidays from Common Sense Preparedness and HE Safety Consultants. Welcome back to Common Sense Preparedness, American Readiness Program. Remember, a wise man prepares for the darkness while a fool plays. Don't get caught playing. Tune in to Common Sense Preparedness at CSPDB.com. Well, it's Christmas time, my favorite time of year. All the hustle and bustle of the season, Christmas trees, holiday parties, Santa Claus bringing me presents. What? You don't believe in Santa? I see him arrive every year in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. It is the only time I, I see hardcore, mean-spirited people find a heart and open a door for someone else. Or wish someone they don't like a Merry Christmas. There has to be a Santa Claus in order to bring that kind of change around in people. Honestly, it is sad to say, but it's so true. We should have that kind of spirit all year long. When it isn't Christmas time, give a stranger a smile, open the door for them, and wish them a good day. Keep the Christmas spirit alive all year long. It will improve your world. The holiday season can bring joy, but it can also bring a very hectic time in which we put ourselves at unnecessary risk. The holidays are time for giving, a time to think about others. So much that we forget about our basic safety. Trust me, if Grandma really got ran over by the reindeers, it would be a horrible holiday season. HE Safety and Common Sense Preparedness have put together some common sense reminders that will help you get through the holiday season in one piece. Christmas trees. Should I buy a real or artificial one this year? It is a question I have to deal with every year. There's an old argument out there. Real trees are fire hazards, while artificial ones are not. They're flame retardant. Well, think about it this way. Most Christmas tree fires start from an external heat source, faulty Christmas lights, embers from a fireplace, things of this nature. Either one, artificial or real, both trees will burn from an external heat source. So is one safer than the other? Not really. They both burn. Real trees burn in seconds and artificial ones melt and produce toxic fumes because they are made of plastic. Here are some ideas to help you make your decision this year. In recent surveys, 21% of the United States households have real trees. 48% had artificial trees and 32% do not have a tree at all. Make sure your tree is fresh, no fallen needles. Most trees sold in department stores or on lots have been cut down months ago. It takes time to deliver these trees to your neighborhood. A freshly cut tree is still green and should not burn for at least 30 days after it's been cut down. Keeping the tree alive starts by choosing one that hasn't turned into firewood before you get it off the lot. Your best bet is to buy a tree that is still growing and cut it yourself, or have someone else cut it down for you. If you are buying one of these pre-cut trees, make sure it's still alive and healthy. Pull on the needles. If they come off easily, it's probably not in good condition. The trunk should be sticky and the limbs should be very flexible. Before you buy it, lift the tree up and bounce the cut end on the ground. If a bunch of needles come tumbling off, it isn't safe to bring to your house. Real Christmas trees that are dead and brittle become a torch in your home. They go up in flames and soak in your room within seconds. HE Safety has a video on, uploaded on its website that you can watch to see how fast a tree can go up. In other recent surveys, 23% of real Christmas trees sold were from chain stores, 9% from nonprofit groups, 12% from retail lots, and 20, 21% of them are from what they call choose and cut farms. I think that is the best option. Artificial trees last for six years in your home, on average, but they last for centuries in the landfill. After the season is over, recycle or discard your tree. 
Never burn Christmas trees in the fireplace. It can contribute to carousel buildup. In the United States, there is more than 4,000 Christmas tree recycling programs. 93% of real Christmas tree consumers recycle their trees in community recycling programs, their garden or backyard. An acre of Christmas trees provide for daily oxygen requirements for 18 people. And so you're helping the environment. When you bring Christmas trees home, cut a diagonal slice off the bottom of the trunk, at least two inches from the bottom. This will help the tree disperse its water and make the tree live longer. This will create a fresh, raw cut for the tree to soak in its water. If you don't do this, the trunk may not be able to drink the water in the Christmas tree stand. Also, Christmas tree stands. Keep the stand filled with water. Keeping your thirsty tree well hydrated is the best way to fireproof it. Keep the water in the stand well above the fresh cut bottom of the trunk. In the first few weeks, well actually in the first week, a tree in your home will consume about a quart of water a day. Keep the tree away from the heat sources like fireplaces, heaters, and heat ducts. The colder the tree is, the longer it will stay fresh. Use a sturdy Christmas tree stand with widespread legs. I think we all have stories of the year the Christmas tree fell over. Hopefully it didn't hit nobody. If you're considering an artificial tree, make sure it's flame retardant. Nowadays they have the lights already pre-made on them. Also, never, never, never place lit candles in or around your tree. That's asking for trouble. Your Christmas lights. Make sure the lights have a factory label which assures it has been tested Inspect each string of lights to make sure there is no damage. Position bulbs so that they are not in contact with needles or ornaments on the tree. The bulbs can generate heat at times. If you string lights together, don't string more than 200 midgets or 50 large bulbs through one string. Don't connect more than three sets of lights to the same extension cord. You are asking for trouble then. For outdoor lights, make sure they are plugged into a GFI outlet. This way it will protect you from water should it get into the lights. Remember, water and electricity do not mix. Keep cords and plugs away from water under the tree. Keep cords out of the walkways to prevent tripping. Don't run cords under carpets or rugs. This is not only a fire hazard, but is also a tripping hazard. Take care not to pinch cords when placing behind furniture. Also, do not run extension cords through doorways where there's a chance of the heavy door cutting into the cord. Ladder use. Be careful when using ladders. Remember, the ladder should be one foot away from the wall for every four feet high. You are listening to Common Sense Preparedness, an American Readiness Program. We are broadcasting and can be heard on PrepperPodcast.com, KPRN TV, Block Talk Radio, Stitcher Radio, BBS Radio, and at our website at cspdb.com. This portion of Common Sense Preparedness is being sponsored by Health Operation Team, preparing one person, one community, one country at a time, providing awareness, education, training, resources, and medical support, health care, and emergency preparedness planning, both domestic and international. Please go to their website at www.hot. EAM.org, HAPTEAM.org, and see where they have been, where they are, and where they're going. Or give them a call at 678-431-8914. Once again, that is 678-431-8914. And let them know you heard it on Common Sense Preparedness. Also, follow them on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. That's HAPTEAM.org. Your source for helping individuals, families, businesses, and communities be safer and healthier. This is James Smith, the Covert Prepper. Have you ever wanted to make sure you have the right news? You want to avoid all that hassle of going through fluff piece after fluff piece and politician and talking about another politician? Well, you can. Visit Prepper Podcast Radio Network News, pprnnews.com. We're the number one site for preppers to get their news. You want to know about the tyranny going on in the world? PPRNews.com. You want to know about disaster? PPRNews.com. From disaster, finance, extreme weather, tyranny, the unrest in the Middle East, in America, 
in Asia, we are the number one source that people come to to get the news that matters most to preppers. The Prepper Podcast Radio Network News. Visit us today, put us on your favorite, and visit us often. I guarantee you will not be sorry. This portion of Common Sense Preparedness is being sponsored by Pure Hydration Water Purification Systems. Rocky Mountain Survival Gear is now the sole U.S. distributor of Pure Hydration Water Purification Systems, which uses no chemicals, has no wait time, and can be filled from any natural water source. The purifier eliminates pathogens, viruses, bacteria, chemicals, heavy metals, fecal matter, sediment, bad taste, and odors, and quickly turns potentially contaminated water into safe and clean drinking water. Pure Hydration offers their purifiers in six different personal carrier modules for every outdoor endeavor. For more information, contact Rocky Mountain Survival Gear at www.rockymountainsurvivalgear.com or give them a call at 720-244-9701. Once again, that number is 720-244-9701. Common Sense Preparedness would like to announce our new sponsorship from FoodInsurance.com. We have looked all around at emergency food suppliers, and FoodInsurance.com has become one of the most dependable and trustworthy food vendors out there. FoodInsurance.com is even offering all Common Sense Preparedness listeners special access to exclusive deals by clicking on the FoodInsurance.com banner that appears on our website or by visiting FoodInsurance.com forward slash Common Sense. Common Sense Preparedness finds it an honor to recommend FoodInsurance.com to our listeners. I hear the new song from Matt Fitzgibbons from his newest album called Entitled. Out in the woods, west of Pittsburgh is home Since my granddaddy's days, they left us alone We lived on the river, where we made panther's breath Till the marshal brought death We had fought for your freedom, from here to the east Cleaned out the Tories till the land was at peace, and we picked off the red coats with our frontiersman aim. Then the tax man came. The Federalists said that they came for the war with a tax on. So we covered some tax men With tar and with feathers General Washington headed The army again With 13,000 men While the gallows are built And it seems that my country Is feeling some guilt They say we've been pardoned Now their point has been made But you should be afraid
Welcome back to Common Sense Preparedness, American Readiness Program. Remember, a wise man prepares for the darkness while a fool plays. Don't get caught playing. Tune in to Common Sense Preparedness at CSPDB.com. You are listening to Common Sense Preparedness, American Readiness Program. We are broadcasting and can be heard on the PrepperPodcast.com, KPRN-DB, Block Talk Radio, Stitcher Radio, BBS Radio, and at our website at CSPDB.com. Christmas decorations. You know, I'm no better than the next guy when it comes to Christmas decorations. I love to decorate like there's no tomorrow. However, after researching some of these items, I think we're going to have to reevaluate how I decorate from now on. Angel hair. Angel hair is a finely spun glass, which can be irritating to the skin, eyes, and throat if swallowed. Wear gloves to avoid all this. Bubble lights. Bubble lights contain a small amount of methylene chloride, which is also found in paint removers. Nibble on an intact light or one that's opened may cause mild skin and mouth irritations only. Christmas tree ornaments. Antique and farm-made ornaments may be decorated with lead-based paint. However, lead toxicity is unlikely from small, one-time occurrences. Fragile glass ornaments, if you have small children, consider not using them. They can be dangerous if swallowed, not to mention the abrasion risk when they fall and break. Christmas tree preservatives. Commercial Christmas tree preservatives usually contain concentrated sugar solutions and are considered non-toxic. However, homemade solutions containing aspirin or bleach can be potentially harmful if large amounts are swallowed. Fireplace color crystals. These color crystals are attractive to small children and can look like candy. They contain powders of heavy metal salts such as copper, selenium, arsenic, in antimonium. If swallowed, they can be very irritating to the stomach and mouth. They can also cause burns in the mouth and throat. If large amounts are swallowed, it may result in heavy metal poisoning. If swallowed, call poison control. Gift wraps. Most wrapping paper and ribbon is non-toxic, but foil and colored gift wrap may l- contain lead. Do not let babies chew on these papers. Here you go. One of the safe, safest items. Glitter and sparkle. All of it is non-toxic. Icicle and tinsel. These may cause choking and obstruction hazards, especially in cats and small dogs. Since they may contain tin or lead, they may be toxic with repeated ingestion. Tinsel at one time contained lead and was banned by the government. Now they're made of plastic. So do not use the antique tinsel that you find in your grandmother's attic. Make sure the tinsel is not placed on low limbs where it could pose a choking hazard to small children, or consider not using it at all. Snow Seam Globes Snow seams are plastic globes filled with water or glycerin. When shaken, snow appears to fall upon a Christmas scene. The snow is calcium carbonate, which is non-toxic. Sometimes water may be contaminated with bacteria, and food poisoning may result. The symptoms of food poisoning include vomiting, diarrhea, and stomach cramps. Snow sprays. Many snow sprays contain acetone or methylene chloride. This solvent can be harmful when inhaled. Briefly inhaling the spray in a small, poorly ventilated room may result in nausea, lightheadedness, and headaches. Longer or more concentrated exposures may be more serious. Carefully follow container directions. Make sure you have a well-ventilated room when you spray. Once dry, the snow particles are non-toxic. All right, Christmas wreaths and plants. A lot of folks make their own Christmas wreaths out of seasonal plants. Here are some some warnings about them. If you suspect that someone has ingested part of a plant or wreath and is conscious, call poison control at 800-222-1222. Once again, the number is 800-222-1222. Do not dial all twos. If you do, you'll get suicide prevention hotline, and they will put you on hold. Trust me, I know. And follow the instruction of poison control. Plants and wreaths are choking hazards for children, toxic to children and pets, can have bug infestations, 
are flammable. Most Christmas plants can cause, will cause stomach pain, vomiting, nausea, and let's not forget about the dreaded diarrhea. Some are plants to watch out for this season. Christmas tree, cedar. Eating the bark can cause a stomach ache. The sap can cause itchy skin rash. Wash it off immediately. Other Christmas trees, pine, spur, spruce, and fir. The needles can cause choking hazards as usual, but they're usually non-toxic. Holly berries. The bright red berries of this plant is especially attractive to small children. Nibbling on one or two of the berries will not cause any symptoms. Swallowing more, however, can result in nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, and diarrhea. Jerusalem cherry. Swallowing this ornamental plant can result in vomiting, redness of the skin, drowsiness, or restlessness, and hallucinations. In rare cases, seizures may occur. Why would you even buy this one? I don't care how pretty it is. Mistletoe. Everyone's got mistletoe. Hey, it was the only way I can get girls to kiss me when I was a kid. All parts of the plant contains toxic substance, and if eaten, can cause vomiting, diarrhea, and stomach pain. One to two berries or leaves eaten by a child will not result in serious harm. As a precaution, when handling mistletoe in your home, place it in a plastic sandwich bag. This will avoid young children and pets from eating the leaves and berries that drop to the ground. Poinsettia. Eating many leaves will cause mild stomach upset. The sap from the plant can cause a skin rash and should be washed off with soap and water. Contrary to earlier beliefs, poinsettias are safe in the home during the holidays. Here's one I don't understand. Rosary pea. The rosary pea commonly used in Mexico is often used in jewelry making because, it's, because of its dark red color and black tipped ends. In India and Africa, the plant has been used as both a human and animal poison. I guess it depends on what part of the world you're in. There is no harm if the bean is swallowed whole, whole, but can be life-threatening if it's chewed prior to swallowing. Vomiting and stomach ache occur within a few hours of swallowing. This is followed by bloody diarrhea. Now, why in the world would you even have this, especially if you have small children in your house? Highly advise not to get the rosary pea. All right, home fire safety for the holidays. During the holiday season, with all the extra decorations, fire can start quickly and kill quickly. Prevention is key, so with that in mind, you must prepare for any type of home fire, especially at Christmas time. Some fireplace safety tips. Don't use your fireplace to burn wrapping material. This can create toxic fumes and even a flash fire. Use kindling and wooden matches to light fires, not flammable liquids. That's just not smart, guys. Don't wear loose clothing when tending fires. You can get your clothes on fire real quick. Keep flammable decorations away from the fireplace. Don't close the chimney flute until the fire is completely out. Make sure the fire is out before leaving the house or going to bed. And dispose of ashes in metal containers and never in or near the house. Some candle fire safety. The National Fire Protection Agency, NFPA, reports that candles were responsible for an estimated 18,000 home fires in 2002. More than triple the number of home fires caused by candles in 1990. 130 people were killed in 2002, 10 times as many were injured. Candle-related fires caused an estimated $333 million in property damage in 2002. According to the NFPA, twice the average monthly number of candle fires occur in December alone. Christmas Day brings the most candle fires of the whole year. Christmas Eve and New Year's Day are tied for second place. Half of these fires were caused by leaving candles unattended, and 5% came from someone else, usually kids, playing with the candles. The NFPA also reports that 40% of all candle fires happen in the bedroom and account for 30% of the death. Indeed, falling asleep was indicated in a quarter of all these candle fire deaths. Extinguish all candles before going to bed. Don't leave candles burning in a room unattended. Extinguish them before leaving or going to bed. Keep candles away from items that can catch fire. Clothing, books, magazines, and curtains. I don't know why people try to put candles in the window. This is an f- extremely fire hazard. Don't do it. Use sturdy candle holders that will not tip or burn and are large enough to collect dripping wax. Keep all open flames, including candles, away from flammable liquids. That's, that's a lot of common sense. Trim candle wax to one quarter inch. Extinguish pillar and tapered candles when they get within two inches of the holder. 
Extinguish container candles before the last half inch of wax is melted. And do not carry candles during power outages. We don't have the equipment like the old days. Use a flashlight instead. Now, we talked about the key of preventing fires, and that will be smoke detectors and fire extinguishers. Inspect and test all your smoke detectors during the season. They should be installed on each floor and outside of each bedroom. Don't place smoke detectors in kitchen where false alarms are common. And also inspect your fire extinguishers and make sure they are ready to go. You are listening to Common Sense Preparedness, American Readiness Program. We are broadcasting and can be heard on PrepperPodcast.com, KPRN TV, Rock Talk Radio, Stitcher Radio, BBS Radio, and at our website at CSPDB.com. This is Jim Smith, the Covert Prepper, telling you about the Covert Prepper Show. If you want to learn how to hide your food, your weapons, your water, your dear needed medical supplies, then tune in onto Blog Talk Radio. Look for Prepper Podcast Radio Network. Look for the Covert Prepper. I'm there, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Central Time, Saturday nights, where you can listen to me tell you how I figured out how I can hide my stuff. I share this with you. And I'm also undergoing a series called 300 Days to Doomsday. This is where I get people ready to, well, be ready for a doomsday. That doomsday could be the end of the world or it could be simply as, well, you lose your job. Or even worse than that, you lose your your number one provider, your your spouse. So listen in and visit www.thecovertprepper.com today. This portion of Common Sense Preparedness is being sponsored by Health Operation Team, preparing one person, one community, one country at a time, providing awareness, education, training, resources, and medical support, health care, and emergency preparedness planning, both domestic and international. Please go to their website at www.hoteam.org, hotteam.org, and see where they have been, where they are, and where they're going. Or give them a call at 678-431-8914. Once again, that is 678-431-8914. And let them know you heard it on Common Sense Preparedness. Also, follow them on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. That's HotTeam.org, your source for helping individuals, families, businesses, and communities be safer and healthier. This portion of Common Sense Preparedness is being sponsored by Pure Hydration Water Purification Systems. Rocky Mountain Survival Gear is now the sole U.S. distributor of Pure Hydration Water Purification Systems, which uses no chemicals, has no wait time, and can be filled from any natural water source. The purifier eliminates pathogens, viruses, bacteria, chemicals, heavy metals, fecal matter, sediment, bad taste, and odors, and quickly turns potentially contaminated water into safe and clean drinking water. Pure Hydration offers their purifiers in six different personal carrier modules for every outdoor endeavor. For more information, contact Rocky Mountain Survival Gear at www.rockymountainsurvivalgear.com or give them a call at 720-244-9701. Once again, that number is 720-244-9701. Common Sense of Paradise would like to announce our new sponsorship from FoodInsurance.com. We have looked all around at emergency food suppliers, and FoodInsurance.com has become one of the most dependable and trustworthy food vendors out there. FoodInsurance.com is even offering all Common Sense of Paradise listeners special access to exclusive deals by clicking on the FoodInsurance.com banner that appears on our website or by visiting FoodInsurance.com slash Common Sense. Common Sense Preparedness finds it an honor to recommend FoodInsurance.com to our listeners. You are listening to Common Sense Preparedness, an American readiness program. We are broadcasting and can be heard on PrepperPodcast.com, KPRN TV, Rock Talk Radio, Stitcher Radio, BBS Radio, and at our website at CSPDB.com. Holiday Traveling. Over the hills and under the bridges, off to Grandma's house we go. 
Well, let's make sure we get there in one piece by following some common sense recommendations. Plan your trip with schedule rest stops, an activity for small children. Ah, uh, the good old car games. I Spy, the number game. Those games make a long trip go very fast, even for the adults. Leave an itinerary with a friend or someone who knows where you are, just in case something happens on the road and no one can find you. This will give rescuers a starting point to look for you. Don't overload your vehicle or obstruct your view with packages. It's going to be a long trip. Avoid a heavy meal before leaving on long trips to prevent sleepiness. Also, get a good night's rest before hitting the road. And if you get sleepy on the road, pull over at a rest stop and get some wings before hitting the road again. I would advise call ahead to your destination and let them know that you are going to be delayed a couple hours. If you are traveling in winter weather, carry emergency equipment such as a first aid kit, blanket, compass, flashlights, etc. Oh, may also make sure you got food. HESafety.org does have a full list of how to prepare your car for winter. Also about winter traveling, please slow down. Give yourself extra room if you're dri driving in the snow. When you start to slide, you need that extra room. Always buckle up. I can't stress this too much. I've never unbuckled a dead body and have been involved with many accidents. Don't drink and drive. If you are drinking, plan on spending the night. Call a friend. Call a cab. Have a friend take you home. The fines are well over $4,000 nowadays. It's not worth it. Not to mention the jail time that you will go through. It's mandatory. Also, new nowadays is what they call highway emergency cell numbers. Talking on a cell phone while you're driving can lead to distractions and accidents, but having a cell phone in your car can be very useful in emergency situations. That's if you have a signal. In every state, you can call 911 for emergencies, but due to the high volume of calls 911 receive, in some cases it might be better off to call a highway safety number. HESafety.org also has a complete list of all highway safety numbers throughout the United States. These are for non-emergencies. Some states have special numbers such as star SP or star 77 for state police or star HP star 47 for highway patrol. Use these numbers to report highway vehicle related problems. You should use these numbers only to report vehicle breakdowns, problems with your vehicle, accidents, hazardous material spills, or other highway hazards and problems, as well as impaired or aggressive drivers. How many times have you seen an aggressive driver want to do something? Well, now you have your opportunity. As a reminder, please don't use your cell phone while driving. When you do this, you become danger as dangerous as a drunk driver. Nowadays, there's so many gadgets out there and software out there for your cell phone. This should make all cell phone conversations to be hand-free. If you don't have any of these gadgets, I think I would check to make sure I was on the nice list, and I would probably ask Santa to bring me some. I know he will. Holiday stress relief. You know, the holidays can be one of the most stressful times of the year, with all the buying and lack of money, lack of time, and everyone's expectations of you. Here's a list of some reminders to try and help you cope with the stresses. One, don't blow your budget. You only have a certain amount of money. Budget your time as well as your money. Remember to take some time for yourself, five to ten minutes every day. A nice warm cup of coffee or hot chocolate by yourself can do wonders. Trust me on this one. Start planning your gift list early. Start buying your gifts early. Christmas is time for you also. One small inexpensive gift for yourself is not out of the question. Don't try and do everything yourself. Ask for help if you have to. Also, one final thing. Make some fun plans for January. That's when the holiday blues start, start to set in, and you need something to, to distract you and change your mindset. Well, that about does it for this episode of Common Sense Preparedness. If you want to follow any information that you heard on this radio program, or any other information, follow us at CSPDB.com. And remember, a wise man prepares for a darkness while a fool plays. Don't get caught playing. Listen to Common Sense Preparedness at CST.
is using both hands. Are you sick and tired of having your First Amendment harassed or censored on Facebook? Use no more as we now have a new alternative to Facebook. It's called Awareness Act. Awareness Act is a social network designed for patriots, to be used by patriots, and is ran by patriots. Stand up and help in the fight to protect your constitutional rights. Patriots can create pages, blogs, videos, documents, articles, and so much more. We even have a unique news feed system that allows you to share, read, or connect with any patriot on Awareness Act. We are a dedicated tool for patriots to use against the tyranny our Constitution is facing. So if you're tired of having your rights infringed upon, come check us out at www.awarenessact.com. Again, that is www.awarenessact.com, the social network for patriots, not potatoes. Whether you take me for the fool, I know that I can be. Whether you see The new Be Prepared for Christmas package from Sun Ovens contains everything you need to harness the power of the sun for cooking, water, and dehydrating. The perfect gift for the preppers or outdoor enthusiasts on your shopping list. A Sun Oven uses the sun's power to bake, boil, or steam food, heat water for purification or personal hygiene, or solar dehydrate. When you use the sun's power on sunny days, you preserve your fuel storage for rainy days. Sun-baked foods retain moisture, have less shrinkage, and do not burn. Sun-baked roasts are tastier and more succulent, and sun-baked bread has unparalleled taste and texture. The new Be Prepared for Christmas package lets you roast an 18-pound turkey. For the past 26 years, Sun Ovens has been proudly made in the U.S., are durable, and have a long life and come with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Don't be fooled by cheap imitations. For a discount coupon, visit sunoven.com forward slash podcast. That's sunoven.com forward slash podcast. This is KPRN-DB, broadcasting worldwide from Southeast Oklahoma, USA, to parts unknown.